In this video, I'm going to demonstrate post transfer Sage 200, creating a stock adjustment. In the first part of the video, we're actually going to specify line by line a stock item to adjust out of a stock item. And we can either write that stock item off or adjust it into a different warehouse. Next, we'll move on to extracting a complete list of stock items. And we'll just enter quantities against them and Posttrans will ignore anything with a zero quantity. Thus, we can create a whole long list and simply just go in and pop a few numbers in to transfer that. Of course, the template could be saved, so the list would be pre-populated. Of course, Posttrans has many uses, such as nominal journals, stock adjustments, invoices, sales quotes, purchase orders, and many, many other transaction types. It can also help you manage bill of materials, stock prices, and much, much more. It's feature rich. It also has in-sell searching and validation before a transaction is imported into Sage. It can also work with Sage 50, 200 and in the future Sage 1. So let's dive into Excel and do a stock adjustment using Posttrans. OK, so here we are on the Posttrans toolbar. I'm going to press help, which gives me access to the extensive list of examples that come free with it. Uh, let's type in here adjustment. So now we can see the six examples that come um, to create stock adjustments. Let's double click on there. You can see this is a transaction type. Now there's um, a training course on an online training course on how to design these templates and how they work. But effectively, we've got headers and we've got lines. And these tags here denote what's in each column of data. So the top here, we're setting the type as a stock adjustment out. Now, if I press space and tab away, you can see there a list of all the different types. So we can write stock off. We can even do a stock take. And uh, so let's select adjustment out. Now, we can type in here a reference, obviously. And you can see there our location is set as warehouse. So what does this mean? So it means that for any item we list down here, we are going to move the stock out of this default location. And at the top here, we can also set the write-off category. So if we don't designate the stock to go into another location, Posttrans will automatically write it off. OK, so how does this work? Well, we can go down here and we can use our in-cell searching so we can find a stock item. It's just connecting to the database because it's the first time I've actually asked it to do anything with Sage 200. So now if I select an item and you can see there we've got we know how much we've got actually in that location. Uh, we can select that and we could say let's move three of those out. So there's three going out of that warehouse and bin seven. Bin seven is the only location uh, bin location in that location. So where can we move it to? Well, we would probably know this, but if I press space, I can actually search for the other locations. So I could move those three to Newcastle. So that's filled all that in, and it's even filled in the default bin location. Of course, if there was other bins in that location, then we could have selected them. So now it's just a case of pressing import. Posttrans reads the template, there we go, and tells us where we're going to move them. Of course, we could write some off also. Let's just write a few off. So let's type in there anything there. Uh, obviously, we need some items. Let's put two in there. So now that item will automatically be written off because we're not putting it anywhere else. Now, it's also warning us that we have an item that is blank because obviously... We need to be careful when we do this sort of thing. So we can say proceed. We can say always proceed. Let's just say proceed. And now you can see one's written off. So we've added that to the stock stock adjustment. So now we can just post that. And you can see now four lines have gone into um, Sage 200. And it was um, stock adjustment out 27307. OK, so let's switch over to Sage 200 and see that. So there's our stock items, uh, the cooker. Let's just pop that in there and uh, do a search. Let's go up to view uh, history, and we should see now a write-off. There we go. There's the write-off. So there's the write-off. So this was the um, this was the bottom line here. We wrote two off um, from warehouse bin location seven. That's correct. And if we go, whoops, if we go back to 
uh, say this one, which was actually a transfer out of a certain stock item into a location. Let's call that up in Sage 200. And we go back to view history. We can see there, let's superimpose the two together. We can see there that we, uh, we moved two into Newcastle. Here we go, there's the quantity into Newcastle from the warehouse. So we easily there created a, a, a stock adjustment using post trans. And of course this data could have been derived by formula or whatever. Um, some people use it actually to issue stock for a van. Um, maybe you have a van that goes out and demonstrates your product. Uh, if you have 20 of them, there's a lot of stock adjustments to manage. So you can actually list here all the stock type in the quantities against them, have a complete template of the stock that exists on a van, uh, and reflect, reflect those stock values within Sage 200 really easily. Okay, so we've seen how we can add individual lines to a stock adjustment, and uh, use lookup and etc. from post-trans. But how about uh, we take that kind of to a next level, and extract a whole series of stock items into the sheet, and then just put simply quantities down for the items I wish to transfer to a different location or write off. In order to do this we need the pro version of Post-Trans. Now I'm going to press the extract button. Now it's the first time I've ever done this on this template so Post-Trans is now warning me that there's a system setting that it needs to turn on in order for this to work. So it's only ever going to ask for this to happen once so I'm just going to answer yes. Next, it's actually detected that we've already got stock items listed. We've only got two, but imagine we could have 200 here. And if I answered yes here, all it will do is it will go down that list and refresh the quantities, etc. And if it was a sales order, it would update the cost prices and sales prices. Um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go, uh, I'd like to extract a whole series of stock items by criteria. So let's just go to the criteria screen. I'm going to pr press clear criteria. So we've got no criteria applied. I'm just going to go to the stock analysis and I'm just going to ask for all my types of wood. And I think I'll ask for some colors as well. Now, I can add it to the existing uh, data on the spreadsheet or I can press overwrite and... Now we can see we've pulled out those stock items that match that. And we can simply go down now and adjust. So we've got some um, we've got some wood here. Now there's five of those in stock, which we can see from this column here. So let's just move one of those across. Uh, where are we going to move it to? Let's press space. And we're going to move it to the factory. Okay. Uh, what else have we got? We've got some beach here. We could move that across. To the factory also this time i'm just going to type fac and you can see post trans has filled in the warehouse automatically so we've basically got two items there we're going to transfer so of course we could have done this with many many items and we could save this down reopen it you know continuation of working through a list let's press import and you'll see there post trans has actually put a number against those those lines in the left hand column here which means it's read them, and you can see there in the summary we're moving um, warehouse unspecified to factory unspecified. Now the unspecified is the bin location, so if you had bin location codes in there, you could you would see multiple bins on the spreadsheet and just select from them. And we just simply post that, and that's posted our stock adjustment into Sage 200. If you're watching this video from YouTube, to go to our website, simply click on the link in the description below. If you're already on our website, you can scroll down slightly and below this video you'll probably see some related links to associated articles. Let's just show you some of the resources on the website. Switch over, here's the home page. You can see here we have a series of menus at the top and if you allow them to expand, you can see there all the different types of importation or extraction you can use with Post Trans and Sage and also the transactions you can post. But importantly, there's a training section here. If we go to the training section, that describes in detail how to alter a post-trans template using the tags that we briefly discussed in the demonstration. Also on the website is a blog which you can subscribe to, and I thoroughly recommend that, so then you can learn of new functionality and uses of post-trans. Because each of these articles maybe hones in on a particular function, a particular tag, or a particular way of using the product to do a particular um, job. 
for instance, expanding bill of materials on an order, code searching, protecting templates, importing CSV files, pricing, managing VAT, order currency, you name it, it's all in there. Uh, and that is easily accessible from the software itself. So if I switch back to a template, and this one's an order template, and I've just got the tag window open here on the right but you'll see as I scroll down this one here um, TL description which is the actual product description actually has a blog article so clicking on there takes me to that blog article and explains in great detail the implications of using that tag and the many different options maybe in system setups alters and behavior of that tag so hopefully that will help also we have uh, the help button itself on the button bar, which takes you to kind of a context sensitive help um, and also takes you to the training page, which explains how to manipulate and alter that template. And in addition to all that, of course, we have these blue help buttons here, which are easily accessible. They're also in the setup windows within post trans. So again, that takes you to a blog article. For instance, this one's about making the cursor follow a certain path that will then take you to that article and explain how you customize that individual functionality so there i hope you've seen um, many different functions and um, online resources that we provided you to enable you to customize post trans to create a template to uh, help you or your customers so i uh, thank you very much for watching this video